all of our lithium polymer packs are 3.7 volts per cell. Whatever the capacity of the battery, it makes no difference. The voltage is 3.7 volts as a nominal voltage. When you fully charge that cell, it will reach 4.2 volts. And it's generally accepted from all the lithium battery manufacturers that you shouldn't draw the cells any lower than 2.5 volts per cell. That's an absolute minimum. And what happens in the case of a lithium cell is it's damaged if you do that. All of our ESC speed controllers are set with an automatic cutoff and this stops you over discharging the batteries. It's also important to time the flight of your helicopter so that you know how much battery capacity you're using. And that's something we'll look at later when we do some flying. One of the things we were just discussing was the length of time that you can fly with an electric helicopter. With an IC model, you can actually see the level of the fuel in the fuel tank, uh, and you can judge when to land from that. With this sort of thing, you need to run a timer. It's a good practice to get into right from when you're learning to fly. Set a timer. When we're just doing hovering, you know, we're maybe pirouetting as I am now, or just gently hovering around, maybe even doing a little fly around in front of us, you're not using a lot of energy. And at the moment, we're not in idle up. We're running this at 85% power as we did earlier. The flight time will be slightly longer than if we're doing, let's say, 3D. Uh, and what I suggest you do is, if the instructions for your helicopter don't give you a length of time that it will fly for, fly it for half the time that you think, so let's say three or four minutes, land it and then charge the battery. And what you'll see is how much capacity you put in, because what we're really interested in is not running the batteries below about 80% of their capacity. So this particular helicopter is flying with a five amp pack, 5,000 milliamp per hour. So we don't want to go much below 4,500, 4,600 milliamps. Um, so we'd fly it for four minutes, charge and see, and then gradually increase it. And probably within two or three flights, you would get to the situation where you know how long you can fly for. You can hear the timer actually beeping on the transmitter. We're now going to kick the machine into idle up. You see it jumped very slightly and you can hear the increase in energy. We're now running a much higher head speed, much more power. And I said that to Mal that I'd let him know I'm going to do a full power climb out where you can see the power and the energy this got. So three, two, one and away we go. And you can see it literally disappears. Uh, and that's pulling 10 degrees of pitch and you can hear no real reduction in power. If we had an IC powered helicopter, you'd probably hear the engine load up. So literally we can do little bumps, but there's no difference in blade loading. The engine, the electric motor has got so much power that it can actually dig in and produce uh, the required torque, the required power to actually keep the blades turning at a nice constant speed. Uh, and this really is a very capable helicopter that you could use as a learning machine by toning down the control movements but generally speaking, it would be flown by a more experienced pilot. We'll flip it upside down. And you can see that again, inverted, exactly like the last one. It's almost exactly the same. No increase in head speed, no change. Uh, and much easier to set up the throttle curve. Whereas on the IC one, we were actually fiddling around trying to get a constant head speed. Uh, when we do our next DVD towards 3D, we'll do that with an IC machine as well as electric and you'll see what we mean there. So we can climb over, and you can see it's all very smooth and calm, and the head speed is very, very consistent. You can hear the blade movement, the energy in the air. It's a very, very capable machine, and it's actually easier to do maneuvers like this with an electric model because the head speed is so consistent. This flight duration on this particular machine is just over five minutes, five and a half minutes of flying around and that's fairly hard 3D. If I actually did this sort of smooth flying that I'm doing now, you'd probably add another minute onto the flight time. You do nose in and you'll see that if we fly this a bit longer, there's no reduction. You don't actually hear reduction in the head speed. Uh, in the days of NICAD cells that we were flying in electric helicopters maybe 10 years ago, from the moment you took off, the voltage would be reducing. The batteries were unable to continue uh, supplying the same voltage, so the head speed would get less and less. With the lithium polymer cells that we've got in this machine, with a 60C, 60 times capacity discharge, it will actually run the same voltage, the same sort of consistency, almost all the way through the patch, uh, the pack, and uh, give you a very consistent flight time.
what I'll do now is we've been flying for two or three minutes with the stops. I'm just going to say to Mal, I'm going to do another power climb out and you'll see that it's much the same as before, hardly any difference. So three, two, one. And you can hear that the blades aren't loading up at all. And we've already used probably 50, 60% of the battery's capacity. So electric flight really is the way forward for people that like a consistent, easy setup. I'm going to land the machine now. Switch it off. And you can see that the blades take a lot longer to slow down because they're larger and they've got more energy.